Not everyone has the spare change for a shelf full of audio components, or maybe you just don't have the room for all the stuff. Maybe you don't want all the clutter of electronic components, but you love music. So what can you get that doesn't cost a fortune, takes up minimal space, and throws out some great sounding audio? I know, a Bluetooth speaker. No. Well, lately there's been a huge growth in the active speaker department. If you're unaware of what an active speaker is, it's basically a speaker with a built-in amplifier, just like your everyday Bluetooth speaker, but with much better sound quality and usually a lot more connectivity options other than straight Bluetooth. Well, today, we'll be checking out the Kanto YU6 powered speakers. The YU6s retail for $399. They ship double boxed and include the manuals, a remote control and some batteries, a power cable, 16 feet of speaker wire, and a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. The YU6s are the largest power speakers that Kanto offers, and they come in several different color options. The ones we have on hand are the matte black versions. These guys measure 6.9 inches wide, by 8.1 inches deep, by 10.7 inches high. They're not tiny speakers, nor are they really all that big. Each speaker features a 5 and a quarter inch Kevlar driver and a 1 inch silk dome tweeter. Around the back of the main speaker, you'll find two optical inputs. There's also a subwoofer output if you want to add more bass to your setup. We have RCA inputs, which you can also use to connect a turntable with a moving magnet cartridge. All you have to do is flip this switch right here, or you can keep it at line level. There's also a 3.5 millimeter input. We also have a ground and a powered USB in. Now keep in mind, the USB is only for charging, so you can't use it to play that music from your PC. There's the main power switch, and these connections here is where you'll use the included speaker cable to connect directly to the other speaker. Remember, the main speaker is carrying the amplifier that'll power both speakers. The other speaker is just passive, meaning it's not self-powered. You can also tell because you won't be plugging this one into an outlet. Now for setup, as I mentioned, all you have to do is use the included speaker cable and connect both speakers together. Just be sure you look at the color of each wire and match them up to the other speaker accordingly. Power output is rated at 100 watts RMS or 200 watts peak, courtesy of Class D amplification. For listening, I've hooked up a Chromecast audio, which is now discontinued, to the optical input. The Chromecast audio can stream up to 24-bit 92K high-res files. So for high-res music, I have been using the Koba streaming music service. So I tried these out in my living room placed on a bookshelf. As a point of reference, I have used the excellent sounding KEF LSX wireless speakers in the same spot. Those have now been relegated to the desktop system. First impression coming from the KEFs was how much bigger the bass was. Oh, and I did listen to a wide range of music, ranging from rap, classic rock, movie soundtracks, well, pretty much everything except, you know, country and some death metal. But yeah, these have got some deep bass and they're pretty punchy as well. I wouldn't say bass is exactly articulate, because it does waver a bit, but it's not exactly sloppy either. It's a good sounding speaker for pop and rap for sure. I threw in Timberlake's Man of the Woods album, and they handled the bass heavy tracks just fine. And I should note, if you're so inclined, you can raise the bass levels using the remote control. You can raise it up five clicks and down five as well. You can also do the same for treble too. If you want to go back to the default settings, there's a little reset button under the controls. Bass can get a little bloated if you're raising it, but if you're just putting on some background music while doing something else, like the dishes, I found raising the bass all the way does liven these speakers right up. If you're going to do some critical listening, you might want to keep it at the default setting. Now dropping in some live music made me appreciate how good the imaging was. No, they won't be as pinpoint accurate when rendering specific instruments in space as my pair of electrostats, but I mean, I was thoroughly satisfied with their performance. They also threw out an appreciable soundstage that reaches behind and to the sides of their physical location, although I did feel they were more forward sounding when comparing them to the Kefs. Treble extension was detailed with a little softness coming off the top, which you maybe could attribute to the Silk Dome tweeter. The high end isn't quite as airy and detailed as some more pricier speakers that I've listened to, but I didn't feel like I was missing all that much. Now, I did do most of my listening using the Chromecast adapter, but this also does support Bluetooth APTX. APTX is supposed to give you better sound if you're using Bluetooth, but these speakers are revealing enough where if you're using Bluetooth streaming, you can clearly hear the compression. Like I mentioned before, if you're just throwing on some background music, then Bluetooth should suffice. But if you really want to sit down and listen, then I would say don't use Bluetooth. 
Now I think a lot of you might be interested in picking these up for desktop duties. And for near field usage, I thought they were excellent. Although you may want to be sure that you have them on stand so they're ear level, or you can purchase these little stands that Kanto makes. These actually screw to the bottom of the speakers and angle the speakers upwards towards your ears. I thought soundstage was decent in my living room, but up close they really do throw out a spacious sound. For me personally, I kind of enjoyed them more from my desktop than I did out in my living room. Of course, speaker placement and room acoustics will play a huge role in how these things sound, so whatever I'm hearing could be totally different than what you'd hear. Alright, the Kanto YU6. I was really surprised at how good these speakers sounded. I had my reservations, but they definitely sounded better than the $400 price tag would suggest. It's a really well balanced sounding system, and it's got a ton of connection options. It's easy to set up, great for near field or far field listening, and they don't cost that much. Oh, and I did forget to mention that you can use these hooked up to your TV through either optical or the RCA inputs. So these are some very versatile speakers. If there's some place that you can audition these, I'd say give them a shot because I think you probably like them. Now I will leave some links to these speakers down below in the description if you want to get some more tech specs or if you want to pick them up. Leave us a comment, let us know if you've got these speakers and what do you think about the sound quality. Check us out on social media and if you want to support the channel, stop by our Patreon page. Hit the like button if you found this video useful and if you haven't already, be sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys again in the next one.